Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Pakistan reaping the bitter harvest of its consistent support to terrorism. Khalistani terrorist Gurpat Pan Singh Panno warns in new threat video, says don't fly by Air India on November 19. Pakistan deports refugees, undocumented Afghans face humiliation and abuse. In a twist of fate for Pakistan, a nation known for harboring and supporting terrorism, disrupting peace in India and Afghanistan, and providing safe havens for global terrorists, find itself in the grip of a deadly militant attack spree. Recent months have witnessed the loss of tens of dozens of lives. The latest incident reports an attack on a Pakistani Air Force training base in northern Pakistan, located in the Miawali district of Punjab province. Tehreek-e Jihad Pakistan has claimed responsibility for the assault as confirmed by their spokesperson. The question that looms large, what has pushed Pakistan to this point of no return? What flaws in the mighty plan of the Pakistani military have exposed them to such a formidable threat? Our report delves into these pressing questions, seeking answers to the escalating crisis. The situation in Pakistan has grown more unpredictable and insecure in the last few months as terrorist organizations carry out attacks throughout the country. Recently, in the wee hours of November 4, the Pakistan Air Force Mianwali training base in Punjab was targeted by terrorists. In response to the attack, security forces in Mianwali killed at least nine terrorists. This terror attack comes on the heels of a series of attacks in Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, which resulted in the deaths of at least 17 Pakistani soldiers. The Mianwali attack has been claimed by the TTP-linked terror group Tehreek-e-Jihad Pakistan. TJP claimed responsibility for the attack in a statement sent to journalists by its spokesperson. Pakistan is in a big turmoil and especially so after the government was Imran Khan government was removed, the new government came in and then we saw when Imran Khan was convicted and arrested before his conviction, there was a huge outcry from the public and that public even went and attacked army installations. Now this is the, it shows that the situation in Pakistan is getting out of control from hand of the administrators over there. When people have stopped respecting army, it shows that the level of confidence of the common man in the government and in the establishment is zero. Therefore, all these people, the jihadi groups that are there, we have seen now in Pakistan, if you go down to any town, whether it is Karachi, Lahore, Rawalpindi, any town, you will see gun-totting men in the streets. They have no control over them. They cannot control them. The e Jihad Pakistan group has carried out various high-profile attacks including the killing of 12 soldiers at a Pakistani military base in Balochistan in July 2023. Like all other Islamist terror formations and groupings operating within Pakistan, TJP's stated goal is to establish an Islamic system in Pakistan through armed jihad. Apart from the important and all-pervasive component of Sharia's based Islamic Jihad, the fatalities incurred by Pakistani security forces have reached to eight-year high in the first nine months of 2023, according to Islamabad-based Center for Research and Security Studies. Moreover, post Mianwali attack, unverified photos circulating after the airbase attack show seized American weapons, which likely fell into the TTP's hands after the U.S. troops' Afghanistan withdrawal. Although the Taliban deny it, most official and independent assessments indicate that the TTP use Afghanistan and has the Taliban's government's backing. Crucially, TTP was the first terror group 
to officially rejoice the Taliban take over within hours of the Taliban entering Kabul. The Mianwali incident gives a fair idea that non-state actors have not been intimidated or threatened by the measures of the Pakistani state to uproot them. Similarly, the working between Afghan and its Pakistani counterpart is not seen as a success in preventing terrorist activities. In fact, TTP now has 12 administrative units in Pakistan, 7 in KP, 1 in Gilgit, Baltistan, and 2 each in Punjab and Balochistan. The problem with the government over there is who will negotiate with whom. All these jihadi groups, they were controlled by ISI and the army. Now today, it seems that Pakistan ISI and the army has lost control over them because they have not been able to fulfill their demands and what these people want is basically they are all batting for a Sharia law in Pakistan and that is the undercurrent. We have seen in all the protests that happened, we have seen that the groups especially in the uh, Khyber Pakhtun areas and others, they are all wanting that Sharia law should be imposed in Pakistan. Now, Pakistan establishment does not want that because in case if that is done, then Pakistan will also become a uh, country like what is in the Middle East. Therefore, Pakistan does not want to negotiate on these with these people, but they are trying to subdue them, which they will not be able to because these people are spread out so much that even if you, it's like, you know, it is like the Hydra over there, you cut off one head, there will be others over there. Now, this Frankenstein was created by Pakistan, ISI, and they are now reaping the fruits of creating Frankenstein. These attacks have raised serious questions about the Pakistani state's commitment to fighting terrorism and protecting its citizens. It is time for the Pakistani state to come clean about its role in the violence and take concrete steps to address the root cause of terrorism. The people of Pakistan deserve better. Let's now talk about Pakistan's Afghan refugees who are facing mounting challenges. Pakistan is forcing thousands of Afghans to flee the country, ignoring all the calls from the international community to reconsider its expulsion plans. Many Afghans who fear persecution if they return to Afghanistan have gone into hiding in Pakistan to avoid being detected by law enforcement agencies. A report. Pakistan government is forcing more than a million refugees out of the country. The Pakistani government has not paid heed to the suggestions of the United Nations, rights groups and Western embassies to reconsider the expulsion plan. Islamabad is saying Afghans had been involved in terror attacks and other crimes that undermine the security of the country. Pakistan says that among more than 4 million Afghans who are living in Pakistan, around 1.7 million are undocumented. Recently, Afghan activist Zarifa Ghaffari made an appeal to the international community at the World Forum for Democracy in Paris. She included the aspect of Afghan refugees being left at the mercy of Pakistani forces while saying that the situation may lead to a larger catastrophe. Crisis of refugee deportation by, from Pakistan is very, very, very important one. It is really critical. It is very dangerous. We will be seeing, we will be witnessing thousands and thousands of women and children losing their lives if we are not taking really serious steps. They are already going through angers, they are already going through uh, not having shelter, water, food, and then mostly they are being beaten up not only uh, inside uh, the, the Afghanistan by, by uh, dozens of people, but more importantly, the, the Pakistani military forces are treating them in a very bad way. They're imprisoning these people. Many Afghans who fear persecution have gone into hiding in Pakistan to avoid being detected by law enforcement agencies. 
32-year-old Afghan singer Saleh Zada is one among them who fears his days of refuge in Pakistan are coming to an end. Saleh doesn't have the required documents to stay in the country. Saleh had left his hometown in Badakhshan province in northeastern Afghanistan and crossed the border into Pakistan without a visa a year ago. It's too much difficult living in Karachi because you have to work, you have to pay the higher, the, the fare of the house and you have actually many of difficulties actually. Some Afghans who converted from Islam to Christianity worry that they could be persecuted if they return. Renunciation of the Islamic faith is a serious offense under the strict Islamic law practiced by the Taliban. Pakistan is not responding to requests for comment about exempting at-risk individuals from deportation. But there is in shock about H. و فعلا هم که دولت پاکستان همه دیپورتیشن ها که شروع کردن فکر کنین این پروسیس ها دارن فعلا این بیخی ها داره خراب کردن به حدی که ما فعلا در خانه های قفل هستیم لاک هستیم نه از داخل نه ما فعلا در شرایط زندگی میکنیم که داخل خانه هستیم برقار روشن کردن هم اتانیم ما همیال فکر کنین دروازه از بیرون قفل است یعنی ما در داخل قفل هستیم بیرون بر آمدن هم اتانیم چراغای خود روشن کردن هم اتانیم حتی به حدی که ما با صدای بلند حرف زدن هم اتانیم بخاطر چی؟ بخاطر که ما باید همسایه ای بفهمه همسایه خبر شود Pakistan's order has sent a shock wave of fear and panic among Afghans in Pakistan Many Afghans who were born in Pakistan are now going to a country in crisis the Taliban government has issued a stern warning to Pakistan for its bad treatment of Afghan refugees amid a crackdown on undocumented migrants. The UN estimates that more than 200,000 Afghans have left Pakistan since Islamabad announced its illegal foreigners' repatriation plan. Moving on. A new threat video featuring Khalistani terrorist Gurpat Pan Singh Panno is doing rounds on social media. In the viral video, Panu threatens to blow up Air India flight. Panu has urged Sikhs to avoid Air India flights on and after November 19, citing danger to their lives. Panno's video has brought back memories of the 1985 Air India flight bombing, which resulted in the death of 329 people. A report. Do not fly Air India. Don't travel by Air India on November 19. This is Khalistani terrorist Gurpatwan Singh Pannu's new threat, which is doing the rounds on social media. A new video of Khalistani terrorist Gurpatwan Singh Pannu has surfaced, in which he is seen issuing a threat to people planning to travel via Air India on November 19. Pannu has urged six to avoid Air India flights on and after November 19, citing danger to their lives. In the threatening video, Pannu is heard demanding the Indira Gandhi International Airport in New Delhi be closed on November 19. The founder of Six for Justice, Pannu has declared a planned global blockage against Air India operations. Pannu's video has brought back memories of the 1985 Air India flight bombing which resulted in the death of 329 people. The bombing of Air India flight by the Khalistani terrorists is the worst terrorist attack in Canadian history. Gurbant Singh Pannu ka kaam hai aag lagana bharkana. Koi us pe vishwaas nahi karta hai. और ऐसी स्टेटमेंटें बेवकूफी भरी हैं कि जहाज को उड़ाना उससे क्या हासिल होगा इनोसेंट लोगों को टारगेट करना किसी भी धर्म में नहीं लिखा है ना ही इससे कुछ अचीव होता है एयर इंडिया बॉम्बिंग में पहले भी क्रिश की बॉम्बे में ये साबित हो चुका है कि सिर्फ उसमें इंडियन नहीं होते किसी भी जहाज में कनेडियन सिटीजन भी थे और बहुत लंबी इंक्वायरी उसमें चली गुरवंत सिंह पन्नू को आज कोई वैल्यू नहीं देता है तो ऐसे उठाकर स्टेटमेंट वो देते रहते हैं 
Panu, who issued a warning for November 19, had referred to the World Cup as the Terror Cup. November 19 will see the final match of the 2023 Cricket World Cup. The final match is scheduled to be played at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. Gurpat Van Singh Pannu is issuing statements in the backdrop of Hardeep Singh Nijjar controversy. Canada has accused India of being linked to the murder of a Khalistani terrorist Nijjar on Canadian soil. The accusation has fueled a significant rift between the two countries and Pannu aims to widen that crack. अब गुरवंत सिंह पन्नू कनाडा में आग लगाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं क्योंकि भारत में अब लोग उसकी चालों में नहीं आते हैं उनको पता है कि ये खत्म मुद्दा है जिस पे वो राजनीति कर रहा है और अपनी रोटियां सेक रहा है और वो कनाडा में ऐसा करने की कोशिश कर रहा है पर उसकी चालें कामयाब नहीं होगी क्योंकि वो सिर्फ हवा में बातें करता है और उसकी बातों में ना कोई सच्चाई है ना कोई दम है और ना उसके कोई पीछे The Khalistani narrative has failed to find any traction in India over the years. Desperate for international attention, Khalistani terrorists settled abroad are plotting anti-India propaganda with the help of Pakistan's inter-services intelligence. There has been a recent upsurge in activity by Khalistan supporters on foreign soil, which has created a security challenge for India. However, India is committed that it won't tolerate any political agenda and terror activities that aim to break national unity. In a determined move to counteract terrorist activities and bolster security in Jammu and Kashmir, the Jammu and Kashmir police has unveiled an innovative solution. The SIA has introduced Global Positioning System GPS tracker anklets to closely monitor individuals accused of terrorism who are on bail in the region. This groundbreaking initiative follows a direct order from the Special NIA Court in Jammu, which mandated the attachment of a GPS tracker anklets to individuals facing terrorism-related charges. This marks a significant milestone in India as it represents the first instance where a person charged with terrorist offences will be continuously tracked during interim bail. A report. In a resolute effort to combat terror activities and ensure the security of Jammu and Kashmir, the State Investigation Agency, an anti-terror division of the Jammu and Kashmir Police, has unveiled a groundbreaking solution. They have introduced Global Positioning System GPS tracker anklets to closely monitor individuals accused of terrorism who are out on bail in the region. This initiative stems from a direct order issued by the Special NIA Court in Jammu, which called for the attachment of GPS tracker anklets to terrorism-related RST. The individual in question, Gulam Muhammad Bhatt, had been apprehended in a terror funding case under the stringent anti-terror law UAPA and had subsequently applied for bail. The court, as part of the bail conditions, demanded strict monitoring of Bhatt and instructed the police to equip him with a GPS tracker anklet. This is a good कि इसको कैसे इसको एड्रेस किया जाए तो ये ट्रैकर की कांसेप्ट आई वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज में इसकी काफी जो है वो प्रचलन है इसका तो हमें खुशी इस बात की है कि पहला ट्रैकर हमने लगाया ये जो सखस जिन के ऊपर लगाया गया मुझे बताया गया है कि ये 50 लाख रुपए सिलेंडर में लेके जा रहे थे टेररिस्ट और सेपरेटिस्ट फाइनेंसिंग के लिए पकड़े गए थे ये रंगे हाथ तो अब पिछले दिनों में हम अभी ट्रैकर के जरिए हम इनकी मूवमेंट और उनकी बेल कंडीशंस के को मजबूती से हम उसको कोर्ट का ही ऑर्डर को पालन कर पाएंगे This marks a significant development in India as it is the first instance where a person facing charges related to terror offenses will be continuously tracked during interim bail 
Such GPS tracker anklets are already in use in Western countries such as the USA, the United Kingdom, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand. The introduction of GPS tracker anklets is the latest in a series of initiatives taken by the Jammu and Kashmir police to counter terrorism in the region. These efforts include proactive counter-insurgency operations against terrorists, the identification and arrest of overground supporters of terrorists, deployment of various security forces, night patrolling and area domination. Moreover, the Jammu and Kashmir police are attaching properties linked to terrorists and their associates under relevant legal provisions. Real-time intelligence sharing among all security forces and intensified cordon and search operations to pre-attempt potential terrorist incidents in Jammu and Kashmir. The fact that the Jammu and Kashmir police has decided to put global positioning system tracking anklets on terrorists who are out on parole itself shows that there has been a great improvement in the security situation of Jammu and Kashmir. This GPS enabled tracking system has been found to be very effective in scientific studies conducted worldwide. In pursuit of restoring tranquility to the region, Indian security forces remain steadfast in their dedication. Recent developments have witnessed a series of operations throughout Jammu and Kashmir, resulting in the successful elimination of numerous terrorists, including foreign nationals. The security agencies have harnessed cutting-edge technology, including surveillance cameras, night vision cameras and heat sensing devices to counter infiltration by terrorists and stem the flow of illicit drugs from across the border. These rigorous security measures have led to a substantial reduction in cross-border infiltration. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsaatnin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.